because this is the gospel. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, who he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to tr betray him, said, Why was not this perfume sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this because, not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you to pray for me as I pray for you this morning. Oh God, may the words in my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be found acceptable to you. Oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. There was once a little girl who came home from school every day crying because people were saying mean things to her. Has that ever happened to you, Amelia? Oh, gosh. Well, and her mom would talk to her every day, and she told her a story. And then she just got to the point where she just say a couple of words. Sticks and stones. Do you know the rest of that? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Sticks and stones became like a shortcut for that little girl, because all her mother had to say was sticks and stones, and the girl knew the rest. Now, that may not always be the truth, because sometimes our words really do hurt other people. We might even see that in the scripture this morning. When people would go to dinner back in Jesus' day, the first thing somebody would do when they came in the door would that help, them help the guests take off their shoes and then they'd wash their feet. They wore sandals and they didn't have the hygiene rules that we had. They didn't have paved roads. They walked around in the dust and, and you can imagine whatever else was on the road. So when somebody came to dinner, the first thing they got was their feet washed. And we, we hear that, uh, really hear about that tradition when Jesus is washing the feet of the disciples who had come for dinner for the Last Supper. So we've got Mary in this story washing Jesus' feet, a gift. And she had this probably nard, which was a very, very expensive bottle of perfume. Probably would cost us probably around $500 to $1,000 in, in our, our currency. It was very, very expensive. It was often used only to prepare someone who had died for their burial. Back in those days, they didn't have all the sanitary things we have, and when things don't smell good, you bring out the perfume. And so we have Jesus gathered with his friends at this house, and Mary takes this wonderful perfume, and she puts it, she washes Jesus' feet, and she puts it on his, the perfume on his feet. Now, some say that she's seeing ahead that Jesus is about to die, and she wants to give him that gift while he's still alive so he can, ex so he can enjoy it. Anyway, it's a gift from Mary to Jesus. Then we get Simon Iscariot coming in and saying, mm -hmm. What do you mean putting that on his feet? We could have sold that and fed the poor. It was a gift from Mary to Jesus. It wasn't any of Simon Iscariot's business or anybody else's. 
And Jesus says, let me get my Bible here. The poor will always be with you. And that is a shortcut, kind of like sticks and stones, for what we just heard. Because here is the real scripture that Jesus, back in the day, they all knew the scriptures. They had them memorized. And sometimes all you would have to say is a few words, and it would bring the whole scripture to mind. And Jesus is quoting here from Deuteronomy 15, 7 through 11. If among you any one of your brothers should become poor any, in any of your towns within your land that the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not harden your heart or shut your hand against your poor brother, but you shall open your hand to him and lend him sufficient for his need, whatever it may be. For the poor will always have for the poor you will always have with you in the land. Therefore I command you, you shall open wide your hand to your brother, to the needy, and to the poor in your land. So when Jesus said you will always have the poor with you, that was a sh that was just a shortcut for what he was really saying. And part of what he was saying, as long as the rich get, keep getting richer, the poor will keep getting poorer. It's systemic. And he says, basically, that's what human nature is about. And we will always, unless something wonderful happens, we'll always have the poor among us. Often that gets used as an excuse, not to give to the poor, but Deuteronomy says always open your hand and heart and do what you can, just like Amelia did this morning when I tried to give her a gift. She wanted to give it to somebody else. But what I see in this scripture is actually Mary giving a gift to Jesus. And then he says, yes, there are opportunities to take care of the poor, and you should always do that. Always do what you can to reach out to your brother, your sister, to your neighbors, anybody who's in need. However, Mary is giving me a gift, a very special gift this morning, and I'm going to receive it. I'm going to receive it as the gift that she has in mind for me because I know there is more to this gift than expensive perfume. Her heart and her soul are in this gift. She is recognizing me for who, this is what Jesus is saying, she's recognizing me for who I am and what is about to happen. And this is a gift from the heart and a soul. I think the early church also had to wrestle with this idea of giving to the poor and taking care of each other. In those early communities where Jesus, where, I mean, after Jesus had died in those early communities before Christianity even, but they would gather and they were afraid of the Roman government because sometimes they would be taken away, sometimes they would be killed, and sometimes who knows what would happen? And so they would gather in secret and they would worship and they would hear this scripture that Mary gave a gift to Jesus. Yes, and can you imagine feeling like you were among the poor and hearing that scripture? What would it be like to hear Jesus say, The poor will always be with you? Of course. So Jesus, the, the early church was hearing this story about Jesus. And I imagine what they might have heard in this story, not only did, do we recognize the importance of Jesus and the importance of Mary recognizing his death and, and perhaps the resurrection, but this was a gift from the heart. And when somebody gives you a gift from the heart and soul, it's nobody else's business. If I wanted to give Amelia some candy this morning, that's between me and Amelia. And so when 
Iscariot comes up and says, oh, let's get put the money in the bag. No, that was a very special gift from the heart and soul to Jesus. And in the early church, people were, imagine they were very proud, and some were not able to eat. I mean, they were hungry. That's one of the reasons why they all gathered. And this idea of Jesus receiving a gift from the heart and soul may have helped them to understand that any gift given to them was from the heart and the soul. It was more than just gathering to eat. It was more than just gathering to check on one another. It was one of the few places where somebody cared about what was going on in their soul. But where people cared about what was going on in their heart, where people understood that the resurrection was about our heart and soul. And today, some 2,000 years later, we hear this very same scripture. Mary gives Jesus a gift from her heart and from her soul and from probably her life savings. That perfume was that expensive. But she wanted to give it as a gift to Jesus while he was still alive and he could understand and appreciate what she was doing for him. And I wonder what that means to us today. I think it's instructive for us to look at this scripture from the point of view of the poor. Where Jesus is saying in a few words what, he, what everybody was hearing from Deuteronomy. The poor will always be with you because the rich get richer and the poor get poorer, basically. In college, I used to hear in sociology, they'd say the rich get richer and the poor get children. But to hear it from another point of view, I think this story is all about giving and receiving. It's about when somebody wants to give you a gift and it's an honor and it's coming from the heart and soul. Our job is simply to say thank you. And another way to look at it is when you are ready to give to the church, to a family member for a birthday party, whatever. Make sure your heart and soul is in it. It's not just a, something you went and bought from, from Walmart. It's a gift from the heart and soul. It's a gift that you've thought about. One of, the most, one of the least expensive gifts I ever gave to somebody, they just sat and cried because they knew that I had gone to the trouble to make something for them and to give them something that they could use. It was a few art supplies. It was not that big a deal, but it was a, art supplies this person could actually use and this person needed. So when we give, I assume that we always give from the heart and soul. Somebody comes in the other day and wants to give money to the church. And everybody's going to say, I said, okay, thank you. Because I always think anytime anybody wants to give to the church, it's between them and God, and it's not my place to not receive it. So I received it and put it in the money bag where we keep our money. When anybody wants to volunteer to do something in the church, I always say, thank you, yes. It's a gift from the heart and soul when somebody wants to volunteer their time or to give money. And it's between them and God, and I certainly don't want to get in the way. I'll help make it happen. But I don't want to get in the way. When you want to give, when you want to volunteer, when you want to make a difference in this world that God has called you to do, it's not my place to say, oh, well, we ought to give that money to the poor. It's not my place. It's not any of our places. So when you give, 
give from the heart and soul because it's more, it's more than a piece of paper. It's, a, it's your relationship with God. And God knows it. It's, it's about a relationship. And when you give, it's about serving Jesus. It's about giving to God. And I think that's what this scripture is all about this morning. Let us pray. Gracious, loving God, we thank you for this church. We thank you for the people who make up this church. We thank you for all the gifts that you have given us. We receive them with gratitude. And likewise, we give because you have given so graciously to us. May we be found faithful in all that we do. We pray these things in the spirit of the living Christ. Amen. Let us continue.